it's Christy here, and we've been talking about hydration and the importance of hydration to your skin. But the FDA just came out with new guidelines and proposals on how to test sunscreen. And you might be surprised to see what they have come up with. So listen up. So we have been talking about anti-aging tips, and this specific specific video is talking about sunscreens and what the beauty industry may not be telling you. So you've probably heard it before. If you're using Retin-A or retinoids or any type of exfoliant, use sunscreen and everything will be okay. If you're using acne products or antibiotics, use sunscreen and it'll be okay. Or if you have hyperpigmentation or age spots, if you use sunscreen, everything will be okay. So should you be using sunscreens? You bet. But here are some things the beauty industry may not be telling you or it's not well publicized in most media. So for clarification purposes, before we get into our video, we are going to be talking about the differences. So UVB is for burning rays and UVA is for aging rays. UVA is what actually causes the breakdown of collagen and elastin and causes the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles and the breakdown of your skin. And most sunscreens are actually formulated for UVB rays to prevent burning of your skin. UVA rays also causes malignant melanoma, which is a type of skin cancer for those of you who are not familiar. So the first thing that you need to know is high SPF or sun protection factor does not necessarily mean high protection factor against UVA rays, it's for UVB rays. So initially when sunscreens were formed, they were actually formulated for UVB rays which is to prevent the burning of the skin and not uva so when you see high spf or sun protection factor it may not be protecting you from uvas hi my name is christy and i'm the owner of go see christy beauty boutique and i've been treating clients to help them fight acne fine lines and wrinkles and hyperpigmentation now going on 11 years and so today we're going to be talking about sunscreens and what the beauty industry may not be telling you about sunscreens Links and descriptions will be located in the description below. So let's get into it. We're gonna be talking about the sunscreens. So most sunscreens are marketed uh, to protect your skin from the sun, and it can, mostly, like I said, the burning rays. However, as of right now, there is real no accurate way of measuring how much UVA, which is the one that ages your skin, um, is your skin is actually being protected from that. So right now, sunscreens are allowed to be marketed as broad spectrum sunscreens or sun protection. But like I said, right now, there is no regulation in how to measure how much your skin is actually absorbing the UVA rays. Oh, and remember to look for the pro tips in this video in regards to what to look for in your sunscreen, especially if you are using any exfoliants, Retin-A, retinoids, or acne medication. So up until 2012, there was no clear definition or guidelines on how, what the definition of broad spectrum sunscreens were. So when sunscreens were actually tested to earn their SPF ratings, what happened is they were actually testing in indoor conditions and simulated sunlight. When they actually tested it in real outdoor conditions like this, it rarely earned the same exact SPF ratings initially. So when sunscreens were really tested in real life conditions, you have to realize that SPF protection can actually be reduced up to 50%. So for example, if you have an SPF of 15, the actual SPF protection that you could be getting is eight. If it's eight, it could be four and so on. So you have to remember that. So the higher that you can start off on your SPF, know that nine, eight times out of 10, you're not getting the actual SPF only because you're in real life conditions, in water, the time of day, type of products that you are using and how it could interact with your skin. So just remember that. So remember, ultraviolet A rays um, actually cause the aging, but you can't feel it. It doesn't burn on your skin. It can actually go through windows, glass, and water. So don't forget it goes through water. And that's me swimming across your screen right now. It goes through clouds. So even on a cloudy day, and it comes through fluorescent lights. 
and is a contributor to photosensitive drug reactions, light sensitive diseases, and even contributes towards cancer formation. So as of yet, there are no sunscreens in the market that completely protect you against the complete spectrum of UVA rays. So actually, while I was trying to do this video, uh, I actually gathered a unique group of audience that was watching me and making me a little bit self-conscious. So I wanted to introduce you to my audience. So as of right now, uh, the only ingredients that can protect some form of UVA rays is benzophenones and ethranolates, which is rarely used in most um, over-the-counter sunscreen products. So they only protect a small amount of the UVA rays, but not the full upper UVA rays. So for now, look for ingredients such as benzophenone 3, 4, or 8, and in combination with using words like broad spectrum UVA protection. Now obviously, this is again, not going to be the full protection, but at least a little bit of protection from a small spectrum of the UVA rays is better than none. So what about sunscreens in makeup? So the beauty industry started adding SPF to their foundation their powders and even their lipsticks because everyone started to be concerned about the sun protection factor but really according to the FDA the amount of sun protection factor that they need that they actually tested under would be way more than normal conditions now before we move on to those of you who are using any type of retinoids or exfoliants or acne products that contain AHAs or BHAs or you're using type of medication that is making your skin photosensitive if you're finding this information helpful then please go ahead and give us a like to let us know that this is the type of information that you're looking for as well as if you haven't already go ahead and subscribe hit that subscribe button and go ahead and hit that notification bell so you know when our next videos are up Okay, so again, for those of you who are using any type of anti-aging ingredient that's making your skin more photosensitive, you need to know that sunscreen does not prevent further burning. So if your skin is already starting to turn pink or red, that means you need to get out of the sun right now. I mean, right now, because once your skin starts to burn, the sunscreen is not protecting you from further burn. It's already burning. So if your skin is already extra photosensitive when you're using these products, that means that your time in the sun, even though you are using a very high SPF, is very extremely actually limited. So get out of the sun once you start to see that your skin is turning any type of pink or any shade of red. So since there are no sunscreens that can completely block out all UVA rays, in 1999 the FDA uh, did not want the term sunblock being used and instead um, said you have to use sunscreen and not sunblock because people were taking that to mean that it blocks out all UV rays and it doesn't. It only blocks out a certain percentage of the UV rays. So to give you an example, if you're using an SPF of 15, and this is according to their testing that they did, if you're getting an SPF of 15, what that means, it is blocking out 97% of rays. If it's SPF of 30, you're getting 98% of the rays being blocked. And if it is uh, SPF 50, it's 99%. And there is an SPF of 98, which you're only getting one more one percent and that's 99 percent of the uv rays and again this is for uvb rays not necessarily uva rays because again they can't measure that yet so finally if your skin is already sensitive because you are using any type of these products or you just simply have sensitive skin they do recommend that you use a physical based sunscreen versus using a chemical based sunscreen because the chemical sunscreens how they work is that that needs to be absorbed into the skin where physical sunscreens create a physical barrier between your skin and the Sun and when they're even talking about physical sunscreens they actually recommend the non micronized 
physical sunscreens. So what that means is if you're using a zinc oxide or titanium dioxide, which is a physical based sunscreen, and you have a white kind of sheen on your skin, that's non-micronized. When it's micronized, it means that you don't get any of that whiteness. And so even out here where there's a lot of reefs, they do recommend that you don't use the chemical sunscreens or even the uh, non-micronized sunscreens. When it's non-micronized, if you don't use, that's actually better for the environment because what that does is when it degrades, it gets into the water, it actually falls just to the bottom of the ocean versus damaging the life of the coral reefs. So once again, according to the FDA, what they consider the two ingredients in sunscreen that are grays or generally recommended as safe and affected um, are titanium dioxide and zinc oxide because again, these are mineral sunscreens. Now this is what the FDA says. The dermatologists generally recommend, um, and again, I did not say it. This is a team of dermatologists in which I get the articles. The best way to avoid sun damage if you are using these products is just to avoid it altogether. Now I know that that's not realistic, but if you're using these, this is why I always recommend if you're choosing to use this, try not to use this in the summertime, especially if you're in an area where there is a lot of really strong rays. Um, I'm here south of the equator, so of course the, the sun's rays are a lot stronger than if you're north of the equator. So if you want to know more information and want to get more into detail about what the FDA is testing, because that's what they're doing right now. It's been in all the, um, you can see it online where the FDA is proposing new regulations and guidelines, told, uh, a revamp of what is required for anything that has sun protection. I'm gonna go ahead and put the links to that in the description below. And um, I go ahead and continue on the next video where we talk about the three types of sunscreens and what may be best for your skin. So see you in the next video.